I would like to begin with a poem in old-fashioned metre. Be good to us, and we'll be good to you. Hi, Joshua. This production will be starring Taylor M. and Cole G. We are proud to present by cynical saints, sharing like Shakespeare, a grateful and recovering son of the play. Scene one, The Voices. Setting. The play begins on a rainy night, at Romeo's dimly lit apartment. Romeo's black top hat and black bow tie, go nicely with his red sock, but make him seem perhaps overdressed for an evening of stewing, alone, in a dimly lit apartment. Romeo leaves his post of ruminating by the window, walks by his bookshelf, towards his mirror. He stops by the record player to set the needle onto a spinning record. face mirror mirror on the wall i see only the emptiness of it all i am trapped in this dark hole for weeks now and i only keep digging myself deeper deeper and deeper still why can't i just lift myself up by my own bootstraps and get out i'm so sick of myself it's as if i think that if i get enough food or enough sex or enough money i'll be satisfied I don't deserve to succeed. Woe is me. What if? If only. Just one more time, please. Alas, fixing a failing with a failing will not save me now. Blue eyes. I know you were thinking about 
Setting. Scene 2 begins inside a small church with stained glass windows. Angry Bill sits at the front of the room in a black key tags matter t-shirt. The coffee maker percolates in the foreground. Romeo slurks and slithers into a seat in the row which is located all the way in the back, furthest from the speaker, and closest to the door, also known as relapse row, also known as denial aisle. <laughs> Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Welcome to the Sharing Like Shakespeare group of High Socks Anonymous. I'm an addict who goes by many names. Some call me Angry Bill, but I've been called much worse. I'll be your master of ceremonies this evening. Let us open this meeting as we do many, but not all, meetings with the Serenity Prayer or a prayer of your choice in silence. Yad God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that cannot change, the courage to change things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Thank you. The coffee maker is uh, not ready, it's still going. It will be ready soon. So don't worry for right now, if everyone could please just practice the principle of sit the fuck down and shut the fuck up. I'll introduce this speaker. I cannot recall why I requested this man to speak tonight, for he is a real donkey. We nearly came to blows at the business meeting a fortnight ago. However, we see eye to eye on the matter at hand. Namely, recovery from the disease of addiction. This man has recovery not of mice, but of men. And I can place principles before personalities and call a spade a spade. Although I only joke when I say he's a donkey, remember, newcomer, much truth is said in jest. I give you hippie Steve. <clears throat> Thank you, Angry Bill. Angry Bill stumbled into the fellowship, bringing with love, honesty, and willingness about two years prior to my arrival. I can assure you, he will never relapse, for that would mean that subsequently I would have more clean time than he, and he will never let that happen. <laughs> Seriously, though, I thank you for the humbling introduction. I need to be reminded that I am capable of reverting into a donkey at any time, and I only have a daily reprieve from donkey dung. Even with many moons clean, I can still slip up into the melodrama of wishing I could be what I think I should be. Pronounce that. I've been around a few sundial spins, and I still might happen into a corner which I can't escape from clean. At least not without thine help. But any back's journey begins at the beginning, and not the end. All them with their smiles. What an alien feeling. They do not want to hear my boo-hooing. It was all good just a week ago. It was me up there at the podium. And look at me now, trembling in the presence of the message. Positively angry bills waiting in the wings, ready to cry out. I told you so. Stop, stop, stop. I'm sure that whatever I share will immediately get back to Juliet. Just like a tightrope walker who plummets to his death amidst cheers from the crowd, only to be eaten by a circus tiger. These animals will salivate at my fall from grace only to ravish me. I can hear them now. Or is this a fantasy in reverse? I must ask myself whether tis noble in the mind to save my face or my ass now. I will not use, but I cannot go on living, not this way. My choices are none. I must share for this reason. I remember now when I shared in the mirror crying. I fancied I had gone mad. 
over the voices in my head. Meet and make is make it. Never alone, never again. These damn voices brought me here. Out, out I say. They will not leave me be. I know it. And they have every intention of ruining any get high I find. I must share. <laughs> Romeo. That was like such a legit meeting. Great meeting, guys. Help put the chairs away, you freeloading pigeons. <laughs> close, close the Setting. Scene three takes place in an old, rundown church. Problem Mike is the chairperson, seated at the front. I'm an addict, my problem is Mike. Welcome to the Hollywood meeting, brought to you by the fellowship's finest. We will now go around the room in a circle of friendship and introduce our sizzles. I'm an addict, my problem is Mike. Hey, problem. I'm a newcomer, and my name is Sarah. Hey, Sarah. I'm an addict recovering from the disease of addiction. My name is Romeo. Yo, Hi, Romeo. Romeo. I'm Rufio, and I'm an addict. Hey, Rufio. I'm a happy addict named Amanda. Hey, Amanda. I'm an addict named Steve. Hi, Hi Steve. Hey, Steve. I'm an addict, Bill. Hey, Hi, Bill. Bill. I'm a miracle named Madeline. Hi, Madeline. Hey, Madeline. I'm John, very blessed, that's on my chest, walk with the rest, truly grateful, recovering at it. Okay, I'm <laughs> It's only one requirement for membership, desire to stop using. In an effort to promote clarity and reduce distractions, however, the Hollywood group would kindly ask that members turn their stunner shades off or to a level at which they will not stun. I will now go around the floor for sharing with the show of socks. Romeo, you got it. I'm an addict recovering from the disease of addiction. My name is Romeo. Yo, Hi, Romeo. Romeo. Ask yourself, would it be insane to ask for a heart attack or a fatal accident? If you can agree with this, then you should have no problem with recovery. That is, unless you pass over the steps with a minimum of concern. You must work the first step perfectly. Your disease is out in the parking lot, doing yoga and Pilates, getting all limber and flexible and strong and shit. When I came into these halls, I was tore up from the floor up. But through step work, I got a checkup from a neck up. <laughs> now I'm too blessed to be stressed. Dependence on God gives me independence in life, which is why you don't see me around much. I'm busy living my wonderful life, and my life is so wonderful today because when I have a problem, I let go and I let God. I always keep a G and an R in front of my attitude because gratitude is key. A grateful addict such as myself will never do. Thanks for letting me share like Shakespeare. Thanks, Thanks Romeo. Sarah, did I see your sock go up? I'm a newcomer and my name is Sarah today. I just, I really think I need to hear myself share today. Like, for me, you know? I need to share for me. I like to think I carry the message to myself in the meeting today. You know, like, thank you for sharing though, Romeo. I love coming to meetings and hearing the message today. Check it out, y'all. I had breakfast today. You know, like, I had some fruit and Belgian waffles like legit for breakfast today. Like, I'm trying to keep the focus on me today. We clean up in here and that's how we stay clean up in here. You know, like, it works if you work it today. Sometimes though, you gotta fake it till you make it up in here. I know exactly what you were talking about, Romeo. I'm saying like, I know men aren't supposed to sponsor women, but like, you helped me today. I got a lot out of that. Check it out though. I gave a bum a sandwich today. You know, like, I walked right up to the bum, you know, and I was like, hi, Mr. Bum, like, or whatever, and I, like, gave that bum a sandwich today. Like, and I didn't ask for anything in return, you know, because, like, I've got a new way to live today, you know? 
You know, like this is just like a unanimous program. You know, it's a unanimous program of reformery up in here. I'm just so grateful today. I'm grateful for my sponsor, and I'm grateful for my sponsor sponsor, and I'm also like so grateful for all my sponsee sisters and like my sponsor guardian ad litem and like my step sponsors and all the women like Miracle Madeline. I just joined a home group, the three C's group, and I'm excited to go to my first business meeting tomorrow night and see what like that whole thing is about. So thanks for letting me share. Thanks for keeping it 100, Sarah. Please help us clean up, y'all. Don't be coming here trying to get the message and drive off like this is some kind of drive through Please don't have Mickey D style recovery, y'all. Stick around and help clean up. They told me that there's recovery in picking up dead bugs off the floor after a meeting. And that has been my experience. So we're going to have a moment of silence, right? This moment is for all the addicts still suffering, y'all. This is for the addicts in the room tonight with multiple years clean that are in so much pain and we don't see it because they don't let us know. This is for the newcomer in here that's so close to recovery and isn't really sure they want to stay here. This is for that newcomer who doesn't even realize that this program can revolutionize their very existence and is thinking that maybe recovery ain't where it's at, thinking about leaving tonight and not coming back. Setting. The scene begins just after a regular meeting has just ended and the group members are about to have their monthly business meeting. Romeo sits in the corner in a sweater with the words the traditions are dead, stitched into it, perhaps by his grandmother. Welcome to the business meeting for the Compassion, Compromise, and Communication group. Let us take a moment to leave our egos aside and invite our individual higher powers into this concert for the primary purpose of the three C's group. I'm a newcomer named Sarah. Hey, Sarah. And my sponsor is about to celebrate eight years, and I think that we should get her a cake. I know she hasn't been to the business meeting in a while. So what? She's still a member of this group. I'm not trying to be an asshole, but... No, Bill, you make it look so effortless. Waka, waka, waka. <laughs> Fuck you, Steve. I just want to raise a question. Do we want to use the money for literature prudently and for our primary purpose? Uh, the fun flow structure? Or do we want to be the most extravagant, party time, excellent group in the fellowship? Why don't we all just join the Hollywood group? Do we want to put one member on a pedestal and buy them a cake? We didn't buy me a cake last year. Who decides who is cake worthy and who isn't? You know, there used to be this spiritual principle, I don't hear it much anymore, called Keep it Oh, the blind leadeth the blind. Traversing in circles, we show no progress henceforth. Bill raises a good point, but simultaneously misses the point. Have you never studied the literature? We sit around discussing violations of the seventh tradition while drinking coffee, which was paid for by the very money put in the basket. It is blood money. The flow of resources is vital. We blasphemy with every pot of cheap-ass Folgers we pour out as sacrament, all to support a few members' dependency on a substance. That's right, caffeine. You are all caffeines, I say. Show me where it says coffee in the literature. I too was called on the downs and grounds to get and make more coffee, but I am free now from having to use coffee. I say this group should enable people no more. We need to get back to the literature. If you drink coffee and you think you are still clean, 
I guess that is between you and God. This is outrageous. <laughs> Romeo, what the fuck bug crawled up your ass anyway? I didn't realize that a cake would create such a dilemma. Okay, so I think we all have a lot to think about for next month. So I would encourage us all to talk to our sponsors about what is really going on with this group, and we can come back. As always, we can keep in mind that the name of this group is the Compassion, Compromise, and Communication Group. Scene five, get in honest. Setting, scene five takes place in yet another meeting. The never alone, never again group of High Sox Anonymous. This meeting meets in the same church where Romeo had his inner monologue in scene two. Newcomer Sarah sits at the front beaming with all the excitement and nervousness of someone chairing their first ever meeting. Okay guys, um, welcome to the Never Alone, Never Again group. Is there any newcomer other than uh, yours truly who would like to share? Or is there someone with uh, a burning desire to share? I'd like to share. By all means, Romeo. To be or not to be, honest. <laughs> that is the question. I've been living like shit, sharing like Shakespeare. Recovery is not my top priority or even registering on my radar. I've suffered spiritual lapses to the point of isolation, dereliction, and utter despair. Service work, meetings, and sponsor, these things do not concern me. What concerns me is my immediate wants and needs, my own interests and instant gratification until they become demands. I feel better than and less than at the same time, a narcissist with an inferiority complex. I want to use. If I had even the slightest illusion that using drugs would make me feel better, I would use them. Thank God for the first step. But instead, I want to alter my state through hurting myself or another person, anywhere but here. I have reached a place with multiple years clean where oblivion is appearing preferable. I need to save my ass. I feel constitutionally incapable of the kind of self-honesty required for this program. I need help. Wow, thanks, thanks, thanks for sharing, Romeo. I'm an addict in recovery named Steve. Wow, this has been a great meeting so far. It takes a lot of courage to share honestly, especially after a relapse, any kind of relapse. I have a lot of respect for people who come back. The real shame is in not coming back. Well, people yell out, no shame during the white key tag. I want to say to them, speak for your own goddamn disease. Because I don't know about you, Romeo, and all the rest of you, but I suffer from a disease that will have me feeling like I'm the slimiest, lowest, dirtiest addict in the whole goddamn fellowship. A misfit among misfits. But see, that's just my disease. I'm no worse than anyone else in here. Well, maybe Angry Bill. He's kind of an angel of sorts. I've been around for a few sundial spins, and I have gotten sick and tired of being sick and tired. With clean time and experience in recovery, practicing the principles of honesty, surrender, humility, and courage does not come naturally to me. It has gotten easy with practice, but it still does not come naturally. It sure beats the alternative, though. The program still works even when I stop working it. However, I cannot live on yesterday's recovery. I have had to humble myself many times and admit the destructive nature of my self-will. It sometimes is especially difficult after I have some time and some experience with aligning my will with that of a higher power, even to the point where God's will becomes my own true will for myself in certain situations. It's especially painful because I like to believe I have changed, and I have changed, 
but I still have a lot of work to do sometimes. A long way to go still. Then the self-pity comes in, and I want to minimize all the progress I have made. I want to disqualify myself from recovery. Like, well, I tried, and I came as far as I could go, which isn't very far. Self-pity keeps me from seeing the reality of the situation. Thank God for putting me into intimate contact with the very people who have suffered like me and recovered from the same issue. Thank, Thank you, Steve. Sure. <laughs> yeah, what's up, family? My name's Tony. Tony Sausages. I'm an addict. First and foremost, before anything, I want to thank my wife, Karen Renee. Why? She made red sauce with pasta before I came to the meeting. There was a time when I could not eat red sauce with pasta. Why? Because I was out there using it. What do you think? This is a fucking game? <laughs> you come up in here, cross addicted, fucking triple afflicted? What the fuck is wrong with you? This is not a game. It talks about it in IP number 942. Read it. That's the problem these days. Nobody reads the literature. I gotta tell you something, okay? Okay, family? There's a lot of misinformation around here. The greatest enemy of knowledge is not ignorance. It is the illusion of knowledge, okay? I'm a student of the literature. Pony sausages, over and out. <laughs> well, that's all, folks. Thanks for listening to Sharon Light Shakespeare. Stay tuned for the sequel. Coming to you soon. Wow, this has been a great meeting so far. It takes a lot of courage to share honestly. Gad. Gad. Grant us the serenity to, to accept the, the things, things that cannot, cannot change. change. Mirror, mirror on the wall. I see only the emptiness of it all. I'm an addict. My problem is Mike. Welcome to the Hollywood meeting. I'm a newcomer and my name is Sarah today. I just, I really think I need to hear myself share today. Like, for me, you know? I need to share for me. I like to think I carry the message to myself in a meeting today. Thanks for keeping it 100, Sarah. So, we gonna have a moment of silence, right? This moment is for all the addicts still suffering, y'all. This is for the addicts in the room tonight with multiple years clean that are in so much pain and we don't see it because they don't let us know. This is for the newcomer in here that's so close to recovery and isn't really sure they want to stay here. This is for that newcomer who doesn't even realize that this program can revolutionize their very existence and is thinking that maybe recovery ain't where it's at thinking about leaving tonight and not coming back. 